Hi, I'm Gavin, and these are the Coffee Conspiracies. And we're back in Oxford uh, this week, and we're going to be looking at retail. Now, retail is one of those really difficult industries where, as in uh, industrials or in office space, being in the wrong office, being just across the road, uh, doesn't necessarily mean your business will suddenly fail. Uh, but being in a retail space, being around the corner, being slightly unseen, being in shadow, being slightly cold, being tightly too hot, any of these small things can make your shop extremely difficult for customers to decide to visit. And when we're talking about coffee shops, you really are talking about passing trade. If you're fortunate enough to become a destination, that's absolutely fantastic. That People will choose to come to your business over any other place and will go there even though it is difficult to get there. Perfect. Getting to that point, though, will take time. And turning a cold site, a site that has been empty for a very long time and where passing trade has become almost immune to seeing that anything is there anymore, is extremely difficult. So let's look at uh, where we are in, in Oxford today. And this again is the Ring Road um, around the city center. And the area we're looking at here is in Jericho, uh, which is a small component of the city center. Uh, it's mainly a student area, great deal of student accommodation. There's a few colleges here, and it's a relatively old area with a mix of uh, sort of eclectic shops and, and things like that. The area we're looking at is uh, Little Clarendon Street, uh, which is near the right, uh, over here. And this is the university quarter in this area over here. The little street itself, um, We'll take a look at it now, but just to get some high level view of it, for Oxford in general, you know, population of 157,000, median income of 25,000, employment rate of 76%, which for a wealthy town might sound low, but you have to remember it's a very large student population. Um, and uh, obviously also quite a large number of commuters, which you can see between our uh, data here, between employed, uh, the ONS figures, which gives us where people live based on employment versus our data based on where you work. So there's a large number of people who commute into London every day. Um, since we can also go a little bit deeper, we can look right into this area here, uh, which is known as by the delightful name of Oxford 009C. Um, and we can see that in this little area, there's about 2000 people employed. This is around the shop that we are going to be looking at. There's a post office, there's a number of shops and stores, um, and you can see sort of around here the uh, the margins that uh, people are getting is around about nine ten percent. So this is an empty shop. It's been empty for quite some time. Next door to it is another empty place that used to be a bank. This is the street itself. Some lots of ugly concrete brutalist architecture, um, along with some more interesting architecture as well. A lot of these shops used to be empty and have recently come back into um, use. These are the two shops next door to each other, so you can see them. Uh, the one is relatively small, it's about 80 square meters. And the other one is currently still listed as a bank, although that's been closed for quite some time. And that I think is quite a lot larger, uh, about 180 square meters. This is the, uh, the uh, community road at the end of the street. And you can see there's quite a lot of shops and restaurants. This is an area filled with shops and restaurants. Retail space tends to be amongst the most expensive of commercial rentals. Most of that is because the assumption is that you're going to make a great deal of money out of it. But it's also because it's the most visible uh, and highly straightforward way of valuing things. You can see where the shops are busy. You can have some idea of what a business is doing. A bunch of people sitting in an office, difficult to tell whether they're making money or not. A uh, bunch of machines working or not working, can't really tell. But a lot of people buzzing in a restaurant, hey, you must be making a fortune. The reality is, is it's not so clear. That said, uh, we need to be very careful about how we evaluate a particular retail space. Now, Little Clarendon Street is quite a quiet street in terms of passing trade. There's not a lot of people moving around. Because of the colleges, you also have to recognize that the colleges themselves have their own cafeterias. So people are not necessarily going to rush out to lunch. Um, and it's mainly ad hoc meetings and people meeting in the uh, early mornings during the day and, and, and in the late afternoon. It can be fairly consistent trade. 
Um, but weekends are also extremely important. Now, there are a number of restaurants and uh, clothing places in the street, and it happens to be a place I know. Funny enough, the two premises that we're looking at are not advertised at the moment. They're simply empty, and they have been empty for a great deal of time. I can't show you how long objectively, because as I mentioned in the last episode, Oxford does not share vacancy data. So we can't tell you exactly how long these places have been empty. But these places have been empty a long time. And that's important from a bringing them back to life perspective. So when I show you the rents shortly that, that they're currently assessed at, the likelihood is those rents will come in now that the street is full and these are the last two empty shops, they'll come in soon. So let's look at these two shops. So first of all, there's 37 to 38. This is the bigger one, 237 square meters. It used to be a bank. Um, and you can tell that we should all be in banking, 20% profit margins essentially. Uh, but here you need to remember about how high street banking works. It's not really about the money that they make specifically there. It's about advertising and branding and about being visible and present for consumers as they walk past and only partially about the business that is done in a specific retail branch. With the way in which high street banking has changed and moved online, you're seeing uh, a lot of consolidation around banking and you're not seeing as many branches as you used to. And this place will never probably come back as a bank. It will need to be uh, re, uh, reclassified for use. And that's a process that whoever takes it over is going to have to do, uh, or the um, uh, council is going to have to do that in advance. At the moment though, it's simply a uh, some sort of uh, professional services firm could take it over working in finance. Um, the rental that we're looking at at the moment is about £67,000 per year. It is likely to be a lot more than that when it eventually goes on the market. And being so large, uh, you're also going to have quite a large amount of fitting costs. Uh, this is a place that has not been in use for a very long time and when it was used, it was for a, a, a performance that is just not going to be something you want to use now. The one next door is a little bit easier, 36 Clarendon, Little Clarendon Street. That's an 80 square meter, 79 square meters um, requirement. The rental valuation on that is 31,000. Um, and you can see that our estimated break even for this and the, 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 um, is about 750,000 versus this 2.5 million for such a large place. Um, the margins though in retail are a lot lower, 8%. Notice this is a retail site, not a food premise. If you decided that you wanted to have a coffee shop in there, it would also need to be reclassified. Now my feeling is, is that this particular street cannot cope with closing doors. There isn't enough passing trade. Um, there are, uh, there's a huge new uh, shopping center opening up in the center of Oxford very shortly. And there will be a lot of low cost budget places going in there. Um, and a lot of some of the more high up end uh, uh, brands going in there as well. So while the street is extremely full of uh, restaurants, this is kind of a restaurant and coffee shop place. Uh, it's where people come for entertainment. There's a cinema down the road, there's uh, a fair number of these, um, there's a wine bar on the corner. So the likelihood is this will just become a cluster of places. Choosing the right type of coffee shop or the right type of restaurant uh, will be important. You'll need to fit in with the general uh, component of the area. But mostly we're looking at a place that uh, as long as an 80 square meter is, is quite small, um, if you're looking at a, uh, uh, a budget there to try and figure out how much you need to spend to be able to, to fit it out, I usually work on taking your break even and multiply two as, as the amount of cash that you're going to need in total to be able to get your business going. If you're looking at £750,000 for fitting, that might sound like quite a lot. And potentially, depending on what you're doing, I mean, a, a small coffee shop, if you decide to go for a sort of a distressed look and use secondhand equipment and secondhand furniture, you could fit it out for a lot less than that. But you, are, you should really count on needing to, to finance a year's worth of expenses. That site is cold and has been cold for a very long time. And despite the new movement in and out of the area, you also have a lot of competition. And uh, so budget on needing a lot of cash 
probably a minimum of six months before you even start looking at reasonable revenue uh, just to try and hit break even. If you're running this on your own and you're going to work with maybe one or two friends, you can keep those initial staff costs down and you can really, really tighten out the budget there. But an 80 square meter site, as far as I'm concerned, is, is a pretty good starter um, coffee shop. Um, you can keep it really small. You can keep your costs pretty low. I wouldn't invest in a kitchen, uh, certainly not a full kitchen. And um, But it's an interesting opportunity. It's a street that looks as if it's coming back. The interesting question to ask is what happens, what will the rental be once this comes on site? If it's a lot more expensive than what it is now, um, you know, if it's if it comes in at £50,000, if it comes in at £60,000 uh, for the year, it's going to change some of these numbers in terms of break even. It's going to make it a little bit more tricky. As I, as I pointed out there, the margins on retail are, are quite low in comparison to other industries. But this looks like it could be a real little gem when it comes on the market. So keep your eyes open and uh, I wish you luck. Yeah.